Hello everybody, James with Love My Pups, My Breeder Supply, Q&A session. So, Q&A session, March the 16th. All right, so somebody's asking about the black coat color in Frenchies. Um, so, how do you get a black coat? Well, typically what there's, there's the A locus, and the A locus is responsible for the AY gene, an AYAY dog is typically fawn. The AT gene, an ATAT dog, has tan points. By the way, both of these are true unless you've got brindle present, because brindle messes all this stuff. Or AA, and that is the recessive black. And my pen's quitting on me. That's recessive black. Here it comes. It's recessive black. This is the guy here that produces a solid coat color. Um, interesting enough, uh, ATA will also produce tan points. My pen's lousy, will produce tan points. So this is the one here, the AA, that will produce this really consistent coat color. Very, very solid coat color. So let's get rid of all this, and let's just talk about AA, recessive black. So on the A locus, if you are lucky enough to have a dog that is AA, that pen is lousy, AA, then um, you can have dogs that are um, very consistent coat. And if they are not blue and they are not chocolate, then they will be black dogs. If they are blue, I wonder if it's just a little wet here. If you get a dog, so let's just draw this out. So let's just draw out what we're going to get here. So an AA dog that is not chocolate and is not blue will look black. <clears throat> a dog that is chocolate and not blue will be a solid, really uniform chocolate color. And a dog that is not chocolate but is blue will have a very nice uniform blue color. And a dog that is both chocolate and blue is a lilac, double A recessive, will have a very nice uniform lilac color. Um, one copy doesn't count. If you get an, a, an AAY, that's, it's, a, it's a recessive dream, you have to have two copies of it. So the short answer is, is if you want a black dog, it needs to be double recessive, AA. They also ask about uh, could they have, they're talking about, um, they've got tick marks on this dog, and could that be brindle? Yeah, probably right. So that's the other thing about this is, is that typically uh, tick marks could be one of two things. It could be that you've got a pied present, so that's going to be a dog that tests SS, pied. An extreme pied, a dog that is just, you know, typically they're white and they have little tick marks on it. That's a pied. So if you've got tick marks present, and it's, on a, and it's on a brown or a black background, then I suspect that's probably Brindle. All right. Shipping overseas, they're asking, asking about our products, our Shipmate product, our incubator product, our whelping kits. Can they ship overseas? You bet they can. We can ship them overseas. It's not too bad, especially if you're not in a huge hurry to get it. Now I can ship um, things typically somewhere between $50 and $100 shipping, depending on the size of the item. Um, and we have everything that we sell will work in both um, America and Europe and Australia. So we have 240 volt and 110 volt versions of all of our products. Somebody has got to do an insemination and they don't have an AI rod. What do you do? Well, I've got a, I've got a video on just this. But basically what you do is if you buy one of these cheap spray bottles that you can buy at Walmart, and you take that tube out of the middle, that tube will pull out. If you use that tube, then you can connect that tube. They're just the right size. They'll fit nicely over the end of a syringe. So there's the tip of the syringe. There's the syringe. So there's your syringe right there. That there fits beautifully over that. And then you've got yourself an AI rod that's about that long. Um, if you decide that you're going to cut the end of this rod because you think it's too long, 
then absolutely go get yourself a nail file and clean up the edge of this to round the corners. Otherwise, the dog's not going to like very much having that thing stick up inside it. And if that doesn't fit on there properly, go get yourself a hairdryer and warm it up slightly and it'll slip over. All right, that's that one. Uh, someone's asking about brindles. Um, yeah, they're, they're, they're asking about this situation with brindles because I made a, a video that says how to avoid brindles. So people are concerned about, you know, is brindle bad? No, brindle's not bad. There's nothing wrong with brindle dogs. They're just, uh, it's like human beings. You know, are blondes bad? Are redheads bad? Of course not. It's just that brindles don't sell as well. So there's a financial aspect to this. You see lots of brindles in the show ring. They're a dominant color. They're more likely to show up because of that. Uh, other colors like blues and chocolates and murals and lilacs can't show in the show ring. There's another reason why you see brindles. But to me, if, I have, if I'm breeding a brindle dog, I always try to breed to a non-brindle dog to reduce the number of brindles present by typically one half. And if you can turn a brindle dog into a pied brindle or a merle brindle, they both kind of mute down this whole brindling process and you'll find that people will be more favorable about buying those dogs. So I like, if you've got a brindle dog and, and make that to a non-brindle merle, that's a great solution because then you're gonna get half the litter is gonna be uh, merles of which half of those will be brindle merles and they almost look exactly the same. So that's a good, good solution. How do I keep my female in, in, who's in heat away from the males? <laughs> well, you practice abstinence, don't you? I mean, look, here's the thing. If you've got a girl that's in heat, uh, she has an itch that needs to be scratched and uh, she will seek out a male to her wildest intentions and if you've got a male around especially stray males they will go to great lengths to get to that female chew through fences jump over fences you wouldn't think they could get through get underneath fences that are so low you wouldn't think the dog could do it dig out from underneath the fence Here's what you've got to do. You've got to keep that girl away from any males if you don't want that dog bred. Or to, away from any males if you don't want to breed your dog. And the only way to do that is to get her in the house and if you've got another male in the house, stick him in another room and put him in a crate. Or put her in a crate. Because if you don't do that, I can promise you that you can have accidents. And I have people regularly who are calling me up and say, oh, my dog's hooked up, what can I do? And the answer is, is if they have hooked up and you don't want them to, go get your turkey baster or a fleet enema or, or a, uh, um, one of these vaginal douche products at Walmart, stick that up the girl and squeeze it and just flush her out as best you can and he might save the day. But the best thing to do is absolutely keep them separated behind a closed door that they can't get through. And if you don't do that, you're likely to have a problem. Um, somebody's asking about how, could you do a video on how to explain DNA results? Yeah, it can be a bit confusing and I probably need to do a whole video on this. But what you're, and, and the, video, and the uh, information you get back is different than, from, for instance, from Animal Genetics, who I use a lot, versus UC Davis, who I don't use, but they're fine. And, and theirs are a little bit confusing. So, what you're going to get is typically you're going to get a column of letters, pairs of letters, that will have some kind of text that explains it. And here's the things you're looking for. So, if your dog... Um, carries blue, you're going to see at least one small D there for a carrier, or two small Ds means it's blue. That's the, that's the dilution gene, but we, we consider that to be blue. The, the brown gene is rather confusing because a chocolate dog, you would expect to be little b, little b, but the problem is it's only recently that there's a test from, from VetGen called the COCO gene that will show you this, and they call that Coco. So they bring that back as small CO, small CO, versus big CO, big CO, to be a chocolate dog. So you're not gonna see that very often, and you'll see it more frequently here in a bit. But typically, most dogs are gonna come back as BB, but they may still be chocolate. So Red Eye Glow will tell you, or you go to Vet Gen, may not, may be chocolate. So that one is a confusing one, that may be a chocolate. Okay, then you're gonna see the A locus. And the A locus has three different components to it. It has the capital E for cream, or the little, capital E for not cream, little E is cream. 
It has the big, big E, little M for black mask, or the little E, M for not a black mask. Um, and those, you can only have two genes there, and it can be any combination of those four things. Any combination of E, 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 M, or little E, M. So the confusing thing here is UC Davis will put it back, for instance, like this. It'll say E, M, E. Like, what the heck's all that? Where's the rest of it? Well, that, the answer to that is, is that is, that is a dog um, that has um, one copy of black mask and one copy of cream. All right, that's the E locus. So what we'd like to see is little E, little E for a cream dog. Um, all right, so then the next one is, and sometimes I'll give you two separate things, one for black mask and one for, for the cream. Um, but then always, you always got to have just one of each of those. Uh, that's a bit confusing. Okay, the next one's going to be the the, the uh, brindle gene, and typically that will show up as KBR if it's brindle, or KN if it's not, and it may come back as KY. But those are the things we're looking for. KBR has brindle, KN doesn't. So this is cream. That's cream. This is annotate this cream slash black mask because they're tied together. You can't, yeah, this is chocolate. I'll put that chocolate here. That's the chocolate. This is the brindle gene. Then going on down, we've now got the pied gene. A pied dog will be SS. A non-pied dog will come back as NN. So NN, or, so it'll be some combination of Ns and Ss. Uh, what have we missed here? The, the, uh, the A locus, this is a confusing one. The A locus is confusing because the possibilities here are A, recessive black, A, T, tan points, A, Y, form. And you'll have combination of two of those. You could have an A, A, an A, T, A, T, an A, Y, A, Y, an A, A, T, an A, A, Y, or an A, T, A, Y. The six combinations you can see on that. So that's the A locus. We'll just uh, put that down. That's tan points. Fawn or recessive black. So those are a y a y is a fawn. A excuse me, I said that ten points. Ten points are a t a t. Hope I'm not getting away. Fawn is a y a y, and recessive black is a a. Okay, now we've got Merle. The Merle gene will be, a Merle dog will be capital M, little m. So if you're, if you are got one copy of Merle, it shows up as Merle, otherwise you're just a straight MM dog. And you have to typically ask for that. You won't get that in a report unless you ask for it. And then a new one is the fluffy, the fluffy gene. And uh, this is going to be L or little l. And um, uh, again, you're going to have to ask for that. So it'd either be a big L or a little l. All right, I spent too much time on that already, so we're going to get rid of all that. Okay, next question. Um, do you have genetics on all of your animals, DNA? Yes, I do. If you go to my website, you look at my stud dogs, every one of those dogs, I'm going to explain to you what its genetics are. And I know the genetics of all my dogs. So if you have any questions about what they can produce and you can't find it, you can call me anytime for anything to do with any of this. You can always call James, me, at 580-799. Two eight seven three. If you're calling me and it's about a general question, it's not an emergency, please don't call me in the middle of the night because it does disrupt our sleep when you do that. And remember that I'm at Central Standard Time. So for me, phone calls between 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock at night are all great. Anything after that, please don't call unless you really are in a bind. You need my help. Um, kibble, how much should you feed? Well, on that... Look at the label on the bag, look at the weight of your dog and see how much it recommends that you should feed. It'll typically give you one or two feedings a day. Younger dogs like puppies, young puppies, two feedings a day, adult dogs, one feeding a day. Um, we feed in the morning, that way they can eat their food and they can go out and play and poop. We don't want to put a dog to bed that's just eaten because he's going to poop in his cage and it's not fair that the dog should have to hold that in all night long and, and it's really too much to expect. How do you know you're getting enough food? You keep on feeding what it recommends, and if the dog starts to have a little bit, if you look at the top of your dog, looking above on your dog, 
What you want to see is you don't want to see a dog that has, this is the tail end right here, you don't want to see a dog that is, that is fat. You want to see a dog, this is its rib cage, so this is its spine here with its ribs here. You want to see a dog that is just almost flat, almost flat, maybe a tiny little bit of a tuck right here. That's what you want to see. I know that's a terrible drawing, but from above, your dog, you should see a little bit of a waistline, but not very much. If you can start to see ribs on the side of the dog, here's the dog with its head, and you can start to see ribs, that dog needs more food. If that dog is fat all the way from the front to the back, it's got too much food. If that dog, you can't see the ribs, and it has a slight waist, that is perfect. Okay. And we don't recommend table scraps because it just doesn't teach the dog the right thing to do. Now, we do give treats to dogs when we're trying to teach a dog to do something. For instance, my stud dogs, every time that they've been in and produced a sample for me, which they enjoy doing, they always get a treat. There's a reinforcement used by giving a treat. All right, somebody here, let me go here. Oh, we're going pretty good. Um, somebody has a Merle Brindle with a red eye glow. Okay, so it has a red eye glow. now. I know that this dog is chocolate because it had a lilac daddy and a chocolate mum. So if it had a lilac daddy, then it had to have got one copy of blue from dad. And since dad is a lilac, it had to have got a copy of chocolate from dad. And since it had a, a Merle mum, it had to have got a chocolate copy of chocolate from the mother. And since it is Brindle, we know that it probably has one copy of Brindle. And since they say it's a Merle that had a Merle mother, then we know that the dog has to have a copy of the Merle. We don't told anything about tan points, so we're going to ignore that. We know nothing about cream because we haven't been told about that. So the question is, what can this puppy produce? Well, so the, the first thing is, is this dog can produce brindles. In fact, this dog is going to produce brindles half the time, even if it's married to a non-brindle dog. This dog should not be married to a Merle ever because you'll get half the litter will be double Merles and they'll have all kinds of problems. But because it's a Merle, half the puppies will not have Merle. And actually I've drawn that the wrong way around, just the little ends, because it's a, it's a dominant gene. Half the puppies will not be Merle and half the cub puppies will be Merle. So we'll have half not Merles and we'll half half Merles. And this, by the way, is regardless of what we choose in terms of our starter. We just know this is a fact. So half of them are going to be brindles and half not brindles. If we marry that to a non-brindle dog, we know this for a fact. That's a given. So here's what we've got to play with. Right, if we put this with a chocolate dog, then we get all chocolate puppies. They're all chocolates, 100%. 100% chocolates. If we breed to, if, we, if that's this dog here, so that is, I'm going to move this over a little bit, that's if we bred to a BB dog, we're going to get that. If we bred to a non-chocolate dog, then we're going to get BBs. They're all chocolate carriers, so that's another alternative, right? So we can control the chocolate depending on whether we want chocolates or we don't want chocolates, depending on what we breed to. Um, the, the blue gene, I'm going to do a Punnett square on the blue gene, because here we go, here's our Punnett square. I hope I've not gone off the edge of the board here. Here's our Punnett square. So we've got the DD girl. If we marry this to a blue dog, what do we get? We get half blues, half blue carriers. If we breed to a chocolate, a blue carrier, what do we get? We get not blue, we get a blue carrier, we get a blue carrier, and we get chocolate, a blue dog. We get one quarter, one quarter blues if we breed to a, if we breed to a blue dog, a blue carrier dog. So again, you know, you can produce from this girl, quite, quite easy to produce some blues from this, this dog. So you can produce blues that are chocolate, that half of which are not brindle and half of which are moles. So you can have a nice litter of lilacs out of this dog. Well, some lilacs. You could get a litter of, actually, with a, with married to a lilac, you'd get half lilacs and half chocolates carry blue, half of which would be morals, half of the overall population would be brindle. All right. Nice litter. Nice litter.
Uh, and the last question. How many days after the a after an AI can a girl get pregnant? I think what they're talking about here is is they've got a dog that they've bred, and they want to know whether or not they can let that dog run loose, or is there a danger of it getting pregnant by another dog? And the answer is, do not let that dog run loose, because a dog can get pregnant for all, up to 21 days after it's seen first lines of blood. Most dogs are fertile between days 11 and 13, optimum time to breed, but those dogs could absolutely get bred four or five days before that or four or five days after that very, very easily. So I would absolutely keep your dog away from any other dogs that you don't want it to be bred to till at least 21 days after its heat. And then you, I would monitor the dog's behavior around a male because you can have a thing called split heat where a dog has started the whole process of going into heat, the whole thing has died down, you've bred the dog not realizing it, and a week later or two weeks later, the dog comes back into heat again, and it will get bred the second time successfully. So you, you, the answer to this is you've got to monitor the behavior of the dog, and it need to be at least 20 days after, 21 days, three weeks after, came into season to be relatively sure that dog can't get bred again. Hey, thanks for watching. Subscribe to me if you like what we're doing. Give us comments, things that we can do more videos on. If we've got things wrong, tell us. And the most important thing is, be nice to your dogs. Bye, everybody.